Alas. Twenty-one. 
I do have Ms. Holly Murray lead the Pledge of Allegiance, followed with Commissioner Truman Tinsley III with the invocation. Please rise. <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are here today to ask for your blessings and guidance and the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Thank you. The motion approved. The agenda is presented. Mr. Brock with a motion. Mr. McCord with a second. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. 7 0. 7 0. Get up here. Yes, I'm going to get some. First item of the presentation delegations is to recognize Chelsea Jones, police officer of the police department, as the July strongest link award. Chief Mike Gates will address. Well, and Mayor, if you'll remember our last meeting, we weren't able to do the June Thomas Link video. That was my fault. I didn't know we had it ready, but we're going to actually watch both of them. So Wonderful. We'll Bryce Martin for June, and then we'll watch Officer Jones for July. Thank you. I've been here a little while here now, and I'm going to make the strongest police. Um, because I just need better type of leadership to do this as much as he does. Bryce will love that. He's not a problem. He's one of those that works for Griffin that will be like, all right, I'm on the way right I think I'm ready to get his hands dirty or his boots dirty for that matter. If I ever needed him to do a water quality sampling or any of those events, I could call him and he would go out all day with me to help me and make sure that we got that job done and done right. Speaking for myself, I feel like I'm heard and that my opinions matter, that I feel knowledgeable in what I'm doing. It's, it's great to work here in the city, to work in the city that I grew up in, my parents grew up in, and I'm going to raise my kids here. Um, so I really appreciate it, and I, I truly enjoy what I do to be able to serve, serve the citizens of Griffin and to, to be able to work here and work with such a great team. As his employees are looking for feedback and want to grow as well, he wants to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And Griffin growing together, I think, really ties in with his leadership style of he's here with us, he's growing with us, we're in it together. Um, I feel like I'm kind of accepting this on, on behalf of the team that I work with because if it weren't for them, then um, yeah, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a job here. So the, the maintenance crew, the construction crew, um, all the technical staff, it's, it's just, it's, it's awesome to be a part of that team and to be able to work with all those people each and every day. And I, and I really, truly enjoy it. And I really appreciate it. I was doing security for the uh, city commissioners meeting and during the middle of the meeting I had a lady approach me and advise me there was a lady having some chest pains um, and that she needed some help so I ran over to her and began asking her um, do you have any medical history any heart problems diabetes trying to figure out what may be causing her distress um, and in the middle of me talking to her she actually went into cardiac arrest um, and uh, Butts County Fireman and I got her down to the ground. We checked for a pulse. Unfortunately, she had no pulse at that time and had stopped breathing on her own. So we began chest compressions at that time. I initiated chest compressions. Um, we were able to get an AED. Jessica actually ran and got us the AED and we got her hooked up to that. Uh, we continued chest compressions until fire was able to get on scene. They took over compressions briefly and um, we waited for fire and their other fire team and for EMS to get on scene. That way they could take over patient care. Um, I initiated chest compressions again and we were actually able to get her pulse back without having to shock her. Um, by the time EMS actually got there and uh, began taking over care, she had begun to breathe on her own and had a strong pulse. 
once they got her onto the stretcher, she actually started to come around and was actually alert. We got her into the back of the ambulance and she was already talking by the time we were able to get her in the back of the ambulance. Um, after all of the, the chaos and everything sort of died down at the meeting, I was actually able to go and visit with her at the hospital. By the time I got to the hospital, she was actually alert and oriented and talking. So once I got to the room, it was actually really cool. She, she kept looking at me as though she, she was confused, like she knew me, but she wasn't quite sure why she knew me. And um, she looked over at me and said, were you the lady that was talking to me? I said, yes, ma'am, I was. She said, well, I bet you didn't think we'd end up here. <laughs> and um, she actually, uh, they took over care for her. And whenever I left her, she was alert and oriented and was still obviously making jokes, which was fantastic. After Miss O'Neill actually was in the hospital, um, she did stay on a ventilator for a couple weeks. Uh, and during that time, Miss Bohannon and her family, uh, we, they actually put me in a group text. That way I could hear about her treatments and how she was, how she was dealing with everything. Um, we'd get daily updates, usually twice a day to see whether or not they were able to wean her off of it, a ventilator. And she started to do really well. Um, after a couple days of back and forth with the ventilator, she was able to come off of it. Her family <laughs> Looks like we are missing part. Y'all want to come and dress the rest of it with Chelsea, please? <laughs> Um, I'm going to do it again, Dad. Got it. <laughs> um, so, after several weeks of um, being on the ventilator, they were finally able to wean her off. Um, unfortunately, uh, Miss O'Neill has passed. <laughs> um, but her family is awesome. Ms. Bohannon has been fantastic. Um, they've reached out to me several times to thank me. Um, and she's very grateful. Their family's very grateful for all of our public safety here in Griffin. And um, I'm honored that I got to be here that night. We thank you for what you said. What a testimony. Um, thank you all for everything, all the love, the grace that you've shown to the Neal family, friends and everything over the last several um, weeks. Here we are again. So we've all become, I guess, our own family together. All right. Um, review financial report for June 2021. Chief Financial Officer Marcus Schwab will address. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners. Normally, I'm going to be, I, was, I would be brief. Today, it's uh, presenting the annual numbers, not that it's the annual report, it's the results for the year. Uh, just in short, the general fund property taxes came in at 4078000 $4, which is less than what we anticipated. So we're basically, when you compare the levy versus the collections, it's $300,000 short. So we're collecting about 93%. TABT came in uh, strong, loss came in higher than expected, and that's a result of the, the Georgia Department of Revenue conducting their audits, and we had some extra funds come in as a result of their compliance audit. Um, franchise fees slipped a little bit, but then overall we had some uh, savings in payroll costs, purchase contract services, and supplies, and, and we did not execute some of the capital for about $750,000. In watershed management, obviously we've had some uh, slipping in the revenue side. Uh, we came in about $893,000 short. And uh, the, while the expenses came in roughly 4 million under, again, that's cost containment and control. Some of those projects are gonna be rolled over uh, to next year. Electric fell short about 2 million, but we made that up with between uh, payroll costs, savings on those teams that were we couldn't fill. 
and then also the uh, contracted services for outside help. Uh, solid waste uh, surprisingly turned the operation around quite a bit. Uh, we exceeded the revenue by roughly $720,000, and uh, payroll benefits came in under budget because of lack of staffing, and purchase contract services, though, on the other hand, exceeded because of the repairs associated with a lot of the equipment. Uh, we did have some areas that came in with positive bottom line. Stormwater came in plus 400, Communi telecommunications plus 300, golf course also exceeded revenues by 337,000 and uh, excuse me expenses exceeded revenues by 337,000 and motor pool exceeded expended exp expenses exceeded revenues by 627,000 on uh, final note here the uh, uh, cemetery trust fund realized gains of approximately $600,000 through the investment strategies that we deployed over the last year and we hope to be able to continue that over the next 12 months Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, the question I had on the, can you hear me, on the property taxes at 93%, is that a deviation? Is that normally how we track? Is there a particular reason? So this morning we had a presentation about the property tax trends back in 2012. We were clocking in around 97%, then it started slipping. And we've averaged about 95%. So the last couple of years, the, the collections rate has slipped below 95, and we're trending south of 93. Uh, so the, the, the trend is in that direction, and I'm concerned that, you know, eventually there's going to be some, some issues that we're going to have to deal with. Is some, it the way that it's being collected? Is it, I know that earlier the county was kind of late in getting those collections out. In, in this instance, I think it deals with the, the, the tax collector trying to go after the collections because we get the money only after the tax commissioner receives the payment. Okay, okay thanks, Grant. Any other questions from the board? No, sir. Again, it looks like lost uh, between the city and county exceeded a million dollars in terms of 1%, so that's continued to be a strong indicator. People are getting a lot of money and spending a lot of money locally. Look forward to seeing the audit report in about two, two and a half months. Thank you for your hard work this year. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Moving into citizens' comment. At this time, the mayor opens the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item, not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to a concern in the jurisdiction of the city. Jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a form of the unlimited expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters remaining city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side who'd like to come before the board? Anybody on my left side? There's one hand on the right side. Come on up. Go ahead. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Thank you. My name, excuse me. My name is Robert Bowen. I got a frog. I live at 1479 Wesley Drive. And I come before you just to sort of a little closure for the family of Jan O'Neill. Uh, those of you who know her, know her children, know what kind of lady she was. But they would like, and I would like to thank everybody in this building and everybody concerned that's been at these meetings for the prayers and thoughts as she went through these battles. Special thanks to the people who saved her life. Even though she's no longer with us, her children were able to say goodbye and she was able to say goodbye to them, which is very important. Lastly, I want to commend the Board of Commissioners and I was really shocked. I go to First Baptist Church and saw a beautiful bouquet of flowers there put in her honor from the Board of City Commissioners. And again, this is just me speaking as a neighbor and a friend saying thank you to everyone from the O'Neill family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Continuing with the citizens' comments, is there anybody else on my right like to come before the board? Last call. Okay. 
moving to public hearings. Public hearings are conducted to allow public comments on specific advertised issues such as rezoning ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the City Commission. Item three can receive comments regarding a request for a special use permit to allow a professional office in the medical overlay district in the planned commercial district for property located at 691 South 8th Street. Director of Planning and Development, Chad Jacob, will address. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before you this evening, you have a special use request uh, submitted uh, by Prime Pest Solutions. They're seeking approval uh, at uh, 691 South 8th Street uh, to utilize that property as a uh, professional office location to operate their pest business. Uh, the parcel is within the planned commercial development zoning district, but it is also within the medical overlay district as well. Uh, professional offices are permitted by right in PCD. However, um, it is required to obtain a special use permit uh, within the medical overlay, so that's what we're doing this evening. Uh, staff has reviewed the application and is recommending a conditional approval of the request uh, with the following condition that upon uh, vacating this location, uh, the special use permit will be voided. At their special call meeting last night, planning and zoning board uh, also recommended uh, approval with the same condition by a vote of 4-0. I'd be more happy to answer any questions. Any questions from board? No. There's 10 parking spaces. <laughs> so we're good on parking. We're good on parking. Oh. Everything checks out. It's going to be the parking chair. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Would the applicant or anybody, would the applicant like to come before the board at this time? <laughs> Good evening, welcome. Hey there. Name and address for the record. Uh, Brian Boozer. Um, I don't live in the city of Griffin, um, but I have operated Prop Pest Solutions. Um, we used to be Mid George Pest Control since 2005, changed the name back in 2013. Uh, we've been renting in the city ever since we started. And so we finally um, built our business up to a point where we could um, uh, purchase this location. I think it would be a great location for us. We're looking forward, hopefully, to be a great neighbor to the, you know, the, the community. And um, any questions you might have, I'd be happy to answer for you. Welcome. Thank you for taking Thank Griffin again. Yeah, well, 20 years. So. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank Appreciate you. it. Again, is there anybody like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody that would like to speak against or have any questions on this application? Moving into consent agenda, we have items four through ten to be taken to hold. We have a motion to take the consent agenda. Mrs. Murray with a motion for the consent agenda to be accepted. Second by Mr. Tinsley. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of items four through ten, please signal by raise your hand. Seven zero. <clears throat> Moving into regular agenda, we have items 11, 12, and 13 that we can take together. Lifting the table for consider a request to resume property located 1331 Maple Drive, consisting of 59.19 acres of low, from low density residential to plant residential development. Item 12, lifting the table to the request to resume property located 1445 Wesley Drive, consisting of point. 1.71 acres from low density residential bid, LARB to plant residential development, PRD. And item 13 left from the table to reconsider request to resume property located at Maddox Road consisting of 99.73 plus or minus acres from low density residential bid, LARB to plant residential development, PRD. We have a motion to lift from the table. Ms. Murray with a motion to lift from the table. Move a second. Second. Mr. Tinsley with a second. All in favor of lifting items 11 through 13 from the table, please signal by raise your hand. We have a 7 0. All right, Mr. Jacobs. Yes, uh, good evening again. Uh, so here we are uh, with uh, the current concept plan that has been submitted before you all. You all have a copy of that uh, this evening. Uh, this is based on input from staff and from numerous public and community meetings that have taken place. Uh, and you now have the latest concept plan. Uh, the current conceptual plan is dated August 18th of 2021. Uh, it proposes 250 total dwelling units comprised of a, a 170 single family residential lots, uh, 
and 80 condominium units. Uh, all single family residential lots are no smaller than one third of an acre. The lot acreage breakdown is as follows. Uh, there are three lots that are one acre or greater, nine lots that are three quarters of an acre or greater, uh, 33 lots that are half an acre to 0.74, and then the remaining 125 lots are 0.3 to 0.49. All single family residential lots which border surrounding existing subdivisions uh, have an undisturbed buffer uh, that is 50 feet, uh, and that buffer is no longer part of each new proposed lot. Uh, it is now part of the overall HOA maintained open space. So that has been addressed as well. And additionally, uh, overall, the open space has increased slightly uh, from the previous proposed 56.6 uh, .6 acres to 56.9 acres. Uh, and again, I uh, reiterate, uh, PRD only requires 39.73 uh, acres of open space. So with that being said, uh, based on this current conceptual plan, uh, staff is still recommending conditional approval of the request to rezone uh, the 59.19 acres at 1331 Maple Drive, the 0.71 acres at 1445 Wesley Drive, and the 99.73 acres on Maddox Road from LDRB to PRD. But with the following revised staff conditions uh, based on the current concept plan dated August 18th, 2021, and they are as follows. Uh, many of these will be the same. Some of them have altered due to the plan, actually. Uh, one, homeowners association shall be created, which will include, but not be limited to the maintenance of all open space, park areas, uh, I'm sorry, uh, to the maintenance of all open space park areas and neighborhood amenities. Two, a landscape plan for all the park areas shall be submitted to and approved by planning and development subject to the following design minimums. Uh, first, in the large park area, there will be 10 canopy trees, minimum two inch caliper, 10 underbrush trees, minimum two inch caliper. Uh, playground shall have a side border. Uh, playground will have a border and mulch layer. The pavilion shall have a pine straw and bush border. There will be four benches that shall have a stylistic trash can and a pine straw and bush area behind the bench. Uh, site will be irrigated. Next to the dog park, uh, there will be two canopy trees that are minimum two inch caliper, uh, stylistic trash can with pine straw border and fenced in area. Pocket parks, all pocket parks will have one canopy tree, minimum two inch caliper and stylistic trash can with pine straw border. And the CBU mailboxes uh, will have pine straw and shrub border along the back and sides of the boxes. Uh, in regard to this condition, uh, the, all amenities must be installed prior to the issuance of the ADSCO or certificate of occupancy. Three, the minimum heat of square footage for all single family residential dwellings will be 1,800 square feet. Uh, four, all builders will submit house elevation designs for approval by planning and development prior to building permit application for compliance against designs submitted with this application. So those still stand. Five stone columns at each entrance to the community stating the name. Six, uh, this one changed slightly. Uh, minimum front setbacks must meet or exceed 20 feet. No two lots directly next to each other can have the same front setback. Seven, overhangs required. Eight, no same home plans directly across or adjacent from each other. Nine, each home plan must have multiple color schemes and cannot be the same as the adjacent lot. 10, 100% of the homes must have at least a three foot water table on the front side of the home. This is a slight change. Uh, in addition to the 50% brick, stone, or shake accent requirement, uh, which is found in section 605F1B. So that's already codified. What's different about that change? Uh, so just wanted to clarify that so that way they still have to do the 50% uh, brick on the front of the house. Just wanted to make sure that it's not just the water table. You're welcome. 11, each home must have uh, one minimum uh, street, uh, one street tree minimum two inch caliper planted before certificate of occupancy is issued. 12, development will be serviced by three separate ingress and egress points. 13, development will be serviced by CBU mailboxes in multiple locations. 14, development will include a walking trail with previous uh, services in all natural areas that connect uh, to the sidewalk system in development. That trail system has also been pulled out of, of the lots as well. Uh, 15 all homes shall have a two car garage, except for single story condo that may be permitted to have one car garage. 16 neighborhood will be priced according to market and shall not have any subsidized restrictions imposed or allowed. 
17, meet all other city Griffin architectural standards. 18, no single family lot shall be below one third of an acre. 19, a rental restriction shall be placed on property where in the only instance a dwelling can be rated uh, is through a hardship provision and a homeowner has, has to have it approved by the HOA. 20, the buffer along the outside of the property shall be, shall be owned and maintained by the HOA and will not be included in any homeowner land. Finally, uh, 21, a traffic study must be performed prior to issuance of the land service permit. That'll be one happy to answer any questions. You have another Yes, sir. Buffer. Yes, sir. Does the homeowner lose adjacent that they have the homeowners going there do anything, uh, removing, you know, shrubs, trees. That's all subject to the HOA. So if if we catch them in that buffer area, we'll contact the HOA and like okay. advise that they need to get out of here. Right. That needs to remain unsure. Any questions on the right? Nope. Anybody else on the left? Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Pleasure of the board. Items 11 through 13. This is more with motion. Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor for items 11 through 13 with the conditions as presented by staff. Please raise your hand. Mayor, before, just to make sure we are all very clear, the conditions that were presented tonight by staff not contained in the agenda. Right. Just this, this, this document sure. information, right? Okay. Seven, zero is the vote. Item 14, through the request for a special use permit to allow professional office in the medical overlay district at the planned commercial district or property located at 691 South 8th Street. Mrs. Murray with a motion to approve. Second by District Tinsley. All in favor, signify raise your hand. 7 0. Item 15, consider approval of Alan Smith Consulting, best qualified applicant to perform brand administration services for the fiscal year 2022 community development block grant award for the city of Ripon. Mrs. Ward with a motion, second by Mrs. Murray. All in favor, signal by raise your hand. 7 0. Item 16, consider amending the city of Ripon's fiscal year 2021 2022 operating capital budget for the confiscated assets fund. In the amount of hundred thousand dollars for the purchase of equipment and vehicles. Mrs. Murray with a motion, Mr. Brock with a second. All in favor, signal raise your hand. Seven zero. Item 17, consider a governmental equipment lease with Yancey Brothers State Contract for 2018 CAT 336F large hydraulic excavator with an annual payment of fifty-four thousand four hundred thirty dollars and twenty-one cents. For five years in CIC physical damage insurance in the amount of $22,480. Mrs. Ward with a motion, Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor, signal raise your hand. 7 0 on 17. Item 18, consider the purchase of a METSO waste shredder from Yancey Brothers in the amount of $679,000 state contract, which is funded by a GMA lease supplement. And consider a preventative maintenance agreement from Yancey Brothers in the amount of one hundred thirty-five thousand one hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Ward with a motion. Mr. McCord with a second. I have a question. Go ahead, sir. What's the life of this equipment? I'm sorry, Mr. Ennis isn't here. He and Mr. Walker are both at the American Public Works Association convention. So I will attempt to answer that question for you. It, it, it really depends on how much you're going to run it. But for us, I think it's about eight to 10 years. And I think Mr. Schwab, if you want to answer more financial. Right, we, we did add a provision within the, uh, the, the, the lease that covered the warranty configuration for another five years. So it's covered for the full time that we have that equipment. And then once it's done, we turn the key over, they give us a new one, and we move on. Good work. Move a motion from Mr. Ward, second by Mr. McCord. All in favor, signal raise your hand. Seven, zero, one, 18. Item 19, consider the purchase of a 2021 31 yard Peterbilt side wander XTR side loader garbage truck from Samsung Equipment Company state contract for GMA approved leasing in the amount of $278,542.56, as well as the five year extended body warranty in the amount of $25,993.44, 
and consider a vendor maintenance agreement in the amount of $17,700 and amend the budget accordingly. Motion, Mr. To approve. Mr. McCord with a motion. Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. 7 0. Item 20 consider a ratification of emergency purchase of the 2012 Freightliner Cascadia Day Cap from California Auto Sales, lowest quote in the amount of $25,995 and amend the budget accordingly. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Second. Mrs. Ward with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. 7 0 on item 20. Item 21, consider declaring several pieces of solid waste vehicles and equipment listed attached as surplus. So mm -hmm. Mrs. Ward with a motion, Mr. McCord with a second. Question. Question from Mrs. Flowers. Will it be possible at some point for us to get an updated list of if these pieces are sold or if we scrap them? I know in the past we sometimes have, but on these specifically, I would like to kind of. We can, we can go back through and pull any of our bug deals or iron paint at auctions and like, you know, exactly what they, what they sell for. If they sell, sometimes they don't sell. We do take them to scrap and we keep those receipts as well. So we will, we can give you all of that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion for board, second by McCord. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. Seven, zero. Item 22, consider the surplus of various parts. Items for public sale, see attached list for the motor pool revision. This is Murray with a motion. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Seven zero on item 22. Item 23, to consider declaring a surplus, a 1989 Ford F-150 for Public Works Department. Thank you, motion. This is Murray with a motion. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. 7-0, item 24, consider purpose for the Ethan Linebacker Engineers, Inc. Project Engineers in the amount of $115,970 for preliminary final design of Hammond Drive, West Poplar Street, intersection project. For the motion to approve. Mr. Brock with motion, Mr. McCord with a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Um, Ryan, do you know if that is done? How long until the actual process goes? This is on Hannah Drive. I think it was a six to nine month design, and then they were going to bid at that point. Okay. Item 25 consider a supplement agreement from Norfolk Southern Railroad Company for additional preliminary engineering service in about $33,180 for the East Solomon Street intersection project. Mr. Ward with a motion. Is that Ms. Flowers on the second? Yeah. All in favor, please signal or raise your hand. 7 to 0. Item 26, consider a task order for the preliminary engineering community development block grant CBG 2022 to Paradigm Consulting Group, most qualified bidder, in the amount of $8,500. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Mr. McCord with a second. All in favor, signal or raise your hand. 7 0. Item 27, consider a resolution for the extension on the time of the stormwater loan from Georgia Environmental Finance Authority, CW 2019 017. With the motion approved. Mrs. Ward with a motion. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 7 0. Item 28, consider a contract with the Spalding County Water and Sewage Facilities Authority for the building of sewer customers and Highland Mills and vending bills at a rate of $3.35 per account per month. Mrs. Murray with a motion. I'm second. Mrs. Ward with a second. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. 7-0 on item 29. Oh, you're against, I'm sorry. 7-6-1 with Mr. Brock against. Item 29, consider the Georgia Debit. Georgia Warren, Georgia Water and Wastewater Agency Response Network, mutual aid agreement for the Department of Watershed Management. So moved. Mr. McCord with a motion. Ms. Mrs. Murray with a second. Mrs. Flowers with a question. Oh. Brent, are the is said that the it would be based on like FEMA's the fine prices. Are those like market rate or 
FEMA publishes um, every year. They're behind due to COVID. What else is new? But um, they publish the, the rates accordingly, and they're usually lower than what you would think you'd get on, in private industry. So they're pretty, um, I guess, they get the job done. Okay. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, if I was in private industry, I'd charge more than that. So that's, but they do an evaluation every year and then they publish it on their website. So we go by that rate. Like if we have a disaster, mm -hmm. that's how we pay per, that's how we get reimbursed for personnel and it's how we get reimbursed for equipment. So it's pretty standard. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Court made a motion. Murray seconded. All in favor, please signal the raise your hand. <clears throat> Seven zero. Item 30, consider purchase of a sewer line rapid assessment tool, SL-RAT, from InfoSense, sole source in amount of $26,955 for the watershed management department. Thank you. Mr. Murray, with a motion. Second. Second by Mr. McCord. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 7030. Item 31, consider a master service agreement. With 120 water for the development of a lead and copper program as mandated by US EPA, amount of $19,700 in program year one and $18,200 in program years two and three for the watershed management department. Move. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Thank you. Mrs. Ward with a second. All in favor, please signal with your hand. 7 0. Item 32, consider task order from a or with Paragon Consulting Group Engineering Design of the Rehabilitation of the Toto Creek Basin Main Collector Line in the amount of $189,500 and amend the budget accordingly for the Watershed Management Department. Motion. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Second. Second by Mrs. Ward. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. 7 0. Item 33, consider on second reading an ordinance amending Article 3, excess tax on short term rentals of rooms, lodging, and accommodations, Chapter 82, Taxation of the City of Griffin, Georgia, in order to administer collection and remittance of the tax for marketplace facilitators of short term rental housing as provided by House Bill 317, 2021 General Session of the Georgia General Assembly. Mr. Mayor, we made one change to the with the ordinance at the first reading, the surplus monies, uh, which currently in the past have been spent on the welcome center, will now be spent on the historic city hall. And we don't have to send that money to GSBTA or anything like well, that? Well, GSBTA gets the bulk of it up front. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Do we have a motion to approve? So move. Mr. Tinsley with the motion, Mrs. Murray with the second. All in favor, signal by raise your hand. 7 0. Item 34, consider a claim by Terry Whitfield for personal injury allegedly sustained in the fall of May 21, 2021, when he tripped on the sidewalk on South 15th Street, as set forth in the anti litem notice dated July 12, 2021, from John Foy and Associates. I make a motion to deny the claim. Mrs. Murray with a motion to deny. Mr. Brock with a second to deny. All in favor, please signal your and all against like sign, 6-1 with Mr. McCord voting against. Item 35, consider a claim by the Stoney Ellis for personnel injuries alleged suffered in a motor, motor vehicle accident on June 11, 2021, when her vehicle was hit by a city owned vehicle. Driven by Officer Lynn Scott Collin of the Griffin Police Department based on any line of notice dated July 13, 2021. Make a to deny. Mrs. Murray on a motion to deny. Second. Second by Ms. Ward to deny. All in favor of the denial, please raise your hand. All against like sign. Six zero or six one with Mr. McCord voting against. Moving into city manager's report. I apologize for all the motions and seconds tonight, but with it being just time of year and the budget will increase, it's just time to pass and quickness. Um, also wanted to thank all of you for your hard work last week at the Archway Intergovernmental Planning Session and for approving our community line strategic plan officially tonight. I look forward to sharing that and implementing it with our citizens very soon once we come up with a sort of more catch, catchy phrase to share them um, with. 
I also wanted to let you know um, that we have instituted a new award. We see the Strongest Link Awards that we present to you all every month, and I'm very grateful for both Press Martin and Officer Jones. I mean, their work with us, but we have also instituted what we call a connector award based again on the link in the chain. We also have a connecting piece. Um, that award is for either groups of employees, whether it be two, whether it be ten. Our first award, um, which we will give quarterly, was actually given to an entire division, which was our water distribution and wastewater collection department. Um, those guys work, and mostly gentlemen who work very hard keeping our water turned on, or if it's two o'clock in the morning and they have a sewer back up, they go out and leave their families and go get it back on. Um, the nominator for that that um, award was actually an, an employee in the planning and development department whose husband happens to be on that crew. They have been down about 10 people for the entire calendar year, and so their on-call list is very few of them that are having to get up in the middle of the night and go work. And so myself, Dr. Keller, Mr. Lewis, uh, Mr. Poole, and I went and served them breakfast Monday morning at their facility before they got out in the heat. I'm sure that wasn't all that pleasant later that day, but they had a great breakfast, and we were very excited to be able to sort of reward them for the hard work that they do. And I wanted to make sure that I mentioned to that, that to y'all as well. Um, and lastly, both Kelvin Hopper and Richard Arnold uh, asked to be here tonight. They are some of our um, guys that work in both solid waste and fleet and as you can see tonight we had a lot of sort of agenda items for those two departments and most of that is because of their hard work and what they have decided that we sort of need to put those um, departments back to where they need to be so i just wanted to recognize them because they did come to make sure that if there were any questions operationally i knew they'd be better to answer them than me so since they were here i wanted to make sure that i mentioned them as well and that concludes my report thank you thank you mr Whaler. I have that. Mr. McCord. Um, just want to congratulate um, Holiday Springs and the community and our city that we are bringing some new housing in our community and we look forward to uh, what you're going to do in that area of town. And as you promised, we're going to do something on the north side too that will. Um, help enhance the, the beauty of our city and can bring some housing for all of the group. So thank you guys so much and thank you um, to everyone who worked on this project to pull it together to make it happen to make us one Griffin all again. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Ms. Murray. Thank you again for our strongest links. You definitely are heroes in, in our eyes and the community. Again, thank you all for coming out again, attending. This is probably the third or fourth meeting that I get to see the familiar faces. Indeed, it's, uh, it's it, the plans have changed drastically from when they were first presented. And I appreciate you all for meeting the demands of the community. And from the last meeting when uh, Mayor took a vote, and I was kind of astounded to see that there were so many who, in fact, favored tabling and not denying the new project. And I think that here again, just trying to award that community support. Uh, I don't want to support anything that they're not in favor of because this affects their community and the entire city. And I'm very proud of this product project. Looking at it, I think that you all made changes even since the last meeting that that uh, are a plus for the city as a whole. So congratulations, and again, yeah, like, Commissioner Reporter, I'll hold you to it. You're watching out. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs, for all the work that you did for everyone. And uh, I hope that it'll truly be a project that our city and community is proud of and it'll be a positive for us all. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Flowers? Yes. Uh, Ms. O'Connor, who were the two gentlemen that you said that you asked to come to the meeting? Mr. Arnold and Mr. Hopper, they're right there in that pretty Griffin hat. Yeah, that's right. I want to give you a hand up. Don't come to the meeting and not here. Mr. Tinsley, Mr. Brock, I just want to thank you for the folks who's been to fight this battle for the last what, six weeks, two months, six months, whatever it may be. The decision that was made was not easy. Not easy at all for us to do nothing tonight. But the bottom line, I think we've got something that we can work with to make the city of Britain much, much better than it is today. It's going to take a lot of years. This ain't going to happen tomorrow night. 
it's going to take probably 10, 8, 10, 15, 10 years or so to fill it up with all and everything we're doing. Is that a good statement? That's probably a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> you want it done, I know. <laughs> but, but thank you all for your patience and everything. And I think we're looking at really what Griffin is all about, just giving everybody a quality home, quality place to live. we got the downtown area that's been a really doing really great things. And the kids in County, we've got, they got some new leadership over there now. I know they're going to do some good things. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Parker. So I want to uh, do a shout out for Citizens Government Academy. That's um, you're still taking applications for that. So it starts Thursday after Labor Day. So if you want to stay engaged and learn about our community, it's 12 weeks. Every Thursday night from 6:30 to approximately 8:30, it is a six, six to eight. It is a great way to learn everything about our city and how we function. And we strongly encourage you to. Um, get up, go online and get an application on that. I um, want to commend this board as well as all the county board of commissioners and the school board and our key uh, placeholders. Your government retreat was very productive. When you start talking about how a community plan, how we're going to be trying to roll together, getting out of our silos and moving into the future. We talk about uh, what's happened in the city of Macon, such as what's going on in Newtown Macon, the potential of us having way for us to redevelop our central business district as well as neighborhoods and we talk about how we're going to implement community schools and, and, and turn our neighborhoods into a place of, of being in place of where folks want to live work play and retire um, i'm excited about that our boards are working together on those issues i do want to commend um get your name right patrick brooks and his team and as well as the community and chad I've got a copy of the 1947 Comprehensive Plan, and when you open up that 1947 Comprehensive Plan, you've got Pine Valley drawn. Where I grew up on Ivy Road is not drawn. None of y'all's neighborhoods are drawn. You've just got dirt with field roads, and over time, this community has, has developed and expanded, and this is just the next phase. And um, what I'm hopeful is that hopefully one day we'll have additional land next to the land that we can continue to grow, but I'm very optimistic about this. I wish this had happened in 2005 when we were able to build a consensus that uh, would have had a plan of residential development that would have given us um, access to airport road and would have given us some other access points that were offered. But um, but in hindsight, 2020, sometimes you just got to keep fighting. So I want to commend this board for their patience and to the citizens. We're here to serve you and, and um, make it one group. With that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. McCord with a motion, Mr. Tenzin with a second. All in favor, please leave. <laughs> <All right. laughs>